We have a uh, clear path. We have a decision made by our caucus. And we had uh, two, if I could say so, very fine candidates. And uh, I think that we did a very good job just making sure that everything remained above board. And, and uh, I can't thank Jeff Rory enough for his participation in the process as well. Why do this? Make this decision now. What, what's the benefit to the party? Well, I think in, I think in the age of term limits, I think that when you have um, you know, these leader elections coming up at the same time, you know, where people are jockeying for a position and doing different things, while you have a uh, election pending, uh, general election pending, I think it sometimes detracts. Uh, Lacey, sir. Thank you. From uh, from you know where you're going in your vision, and it's not necessarily a single focus. Mm -hmm. uh, just by the sheer mechanics of everything, of having a caucus two days later, and so you have that kind of an issue. And I think that uh, you know, it, it, in the age of term limits, a lot of states are starting to look into this, and some states have already moved to it, and it's been successful. And so we've uh, we've adopted that as well. So in short, it's just to to get what could be contentious uh, and distracting, get it out of the way early, settle that discussion so that it, the, it the election can, yes. can unfold. It, it absolutely makes sure that your your caucus is united. And I think that in some of the states that have this, you've seen that that they do have uh, less going on inside the caucus itself, and it's more of a, a party unity moving forward, and, and everybody's working towards the same goal. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. That everybody's working towards the same goal, and and that's where uh, where I think that it becomes a benefit, especially when you're talking about. And we have term limits, and that, that does hurt. Okay. What uh, What was the pitch that you made to your colleagues for why it should be you? Uh, you know, I, I think that the pitch that is that we have a, uh, you know, we have two very strong candidates. We have a uh, election coming up. That, we have a ton of seats that are, that are open. We have, you know, 57 seats that are, are now open, and you have that kind of a map. An eight-seat swing is not uh, not unforeseeable, and that uh, you know some of the work that I've been doing, some of the things that I've done for other candidates, that was you know, the, the ability to. Uh, trust me to make sure I have an open door that I'm inclusive in the process from all regions of the state. I think is the the, the main objective there. Okay. How do you think uh, being chairman of, of HDCC helped in, in in getting to this position? I mean, what what role does that play in? in well, I, I don't think it I don't think it helped or hurt. I think that uh, you have uh, you know an election that, that just happened. I you know, worked while. Uh, just a member of the caucus. I worked with a lot of these candidates and, and helped them in, in various ways. And uh, I've helped members of the caucus in various ways, as has Jeff. And you know, I think it became just a, an issue of looking forward, what they think. What, if you become, for example, Speaker of the House, which is definitely not out of level of possibility given the margin, what would be things you would want to focus on in 2011 and onward? Well, I think you start working on things that are affecting uh, Missouri. I think one thing that you got to look at is the transportation cliff we're looking at. And I think uh, Representative Jason Kuzner has been you know, spearheading that along with Ed Schieffer from my class. They've really been taking a look at that, uh, as well as Tim Meadows, on different things that are happening inside of, of the transportation funding. Uh, you know, inside the state, I think you look at things for for the you know the middle class, working folks, making sure that you know we we reprioritize so that uh, those folks are actually the the focus of where we're where we're looking and and how we're looking forward. This state's going to move, and it's going to move forward based upon that that middle class that we have. And conversely, it seems like. Even if the Democrats don't take over, it's going to be so close that the Democrats would have a very big sway in the House. Is it? I've noticed over the last couple of years, you've never been afraid to engage and, you know, get in back and forth with Republicans. Does it mean something that you have a leader of the Democratic Caucus who can stand strong when you know the margins and votes are going to be closest? Did that also play into the decision making? Uh, I, that I don't know. Um, I, I think that both of us that, that we're running can. 
can stand strong as far as that goes. But I, I, I know that there are, you know, a lot of things that if, if it is closer and if we don't win, then I definitely want it to be a lot closer. But they, uh, you know, those issues and, and those things that need to be addressed, yes, they're going to be tough votes and they're going to be these bills that, that we have. And I think that, you know, the ability to, uh, you know, actually focus on what the issue actually does, what the bill actually does to the people of this state and how it benefits or to their detriment, I think being able to stand strong in that is a, it's a big deal. And the only other question I have is who from this new freshman class do you think will emerge to, to help you next year? You know, I think there are going to be a lot of them and uh, there will be probably too many to address on the rest of your battery, mm -hmm. uh, but we have an incredibly strong freshman class and from top to bottom they are impressive whether you go down from their district number all the way through. I don't think that there is a bad member of our freshman class at all. I think they are all extremely talented and I'm, I'm very happy to have them in here helping me.